So I was asked, um, how do you embroil meats without burning them up? So what I decided to do is make them unembroil. So yes, today we're making them unembroil. You're gonna enjoy it. Look at this. So good, I know you can barely see it, but I don't want, you know what? Let me move the sauce. Move the sauce so you can get a better look. It's all nice and sliced up. Let me taste one. Let me taste a piece. Dip it in the sauce. See what she tastes, what, what we're working with. See. Yeah. You're going to love this. Get the recipe. Hey, this is Charles Chiron. That's the best elevated music I ever heard. All right, so for this recipe, we have some London broil here, which is actually is top round. You know, London broil is not a cut of meat. It's a technique in cooking. So you can have flank steak, fat steak, skirt steak. You know, you can have top round. You can have chuck steak, a chuck roast. And it can all be London broil based on how you cook it. So keep that in mind. London broil is not a cut of meat. Okay, even though it's labeled like that in the store, it's not a cut of meat. Don't don't be fooled. And we're gonna need some garlic. So here we got about two tablespoons of garlic. We have a half a cup of oil. Now, I'm using canola oil. You can use vegetable oil. You can use olive oil. Um, any kind of oil you want. The thing is, is based on your vinegar. Now, in this case, I'm using a, a balsamic vinegar. Now, the ratio is, is 2 to 1. And it goes like this. For every one part of balsamic vinegar or one part of vinegar you use, you want to always use two parts of oil, right? So in this case, I have a quarter of a cup of balsamic vinegar, and, I, and that's why I have a half a cup of oil, okay? Keep that in mind, it's real important. And then I have sliced real thin, a uh, half of an onion, okay, and then we're going to need some black pepper and some kosher salt to taste, okay. Now let's get all this put together and we'll be okay, ready. Let's build this marinade. We're going to add the half a cup of oil, okay, get the oil in. The quarter cup of your vinegar. And like I said, in this case, I'm using balsamic vinegar. It's, it's For me, in this recipe, it works the best. Balsamic. And then we're going to add our garlic. Our minced garlic. Okay. Now we're going to add about a teaspoon of kosher salt. Right? And about a teaspoon of black pepper. Okay, you don't need a lot. Now let's get this mixed up. Okay, now let's get the meat ready. Now for the meat, what you want to do, if you have a meat tenderizer, um, you could do that. But what I could do is use a fork and just stab it. You know, just poke it up, put holes in it. So the marinade can get in there, right? And don't worry, even though you're putting these holes in it, when we start cooking it, these holes are going to close up, right? So you, you won't see them. So 
is go ahead and get it all nice and poked up because you need a way for the marinade to get down into the meat. Right? Just turn it over. Do this side. You want to get both sides. It's very important to get both sides. Now I've trimmed this up when I took the excess uh, fat, the hard fat out, you know, the parts I could get to. Um, because nobody really wants to eat that. Just get this nice and poked up. Okay. Now we want to take this meat and put it in a Ziploc bag. You see? Put it in the Ziploc bag. If you don't have a Ziploc bag, you could use a small container. Ziploc bags just makes it easier, right? Now we're going to pour our marinade in here. Go stir up again. Let's get our marinade poured in it. Yeah. Now, you're not limited to what I use. You can use whatever you want in marinade. You can put your, you know, onion powders and stuff in it, but I'm using the onion slices. Now, we're going to add these onion slices to it. All right, get that all in there. Now, we're going to seal up the bag. And, yes, I left the area on purpose because I want to be able to move the onions around, you see? Now the onions have been moved around. Now, open it back up, squeeze the air out as much as you can get out of there. And there we have it, All right? Now this is gonna go into the refrigerator. You know, you want to think ahead, right? So you want to give it a minimum of eight hours, but if you're in a bind, you know, two hours will do, you know, but I'm going to do mine for about 15 hours in the refrigerator, right? Um, and then we'll go to the next step. So I'll see you then. This is going in the fridge. Now it's in the bowl here, and what you want to do is every, you know, two to four hours, give it a flip. Turn it over, you know, just, you know, put the chance, just give it a turnover like that. You want know, to make sure the marinade gets all in. This is going to be real flavorful if you give it a proper amount of marinade time. Um, it cooks relatively fast, and I know you're going to enjoy it. All right, so what we're going to do now, turn it over, massage. The meat a bit. Help get all that vinaigrette, that marinade in those holes that you punctured. And like I said, you know, don't worry about the holes because when you cook this, they're going to close up and they're going to trap. If you were to trap that marinade in there, um, let's put this back in the bowl. Get this back in the refrigerator. Remember, this is a marinade, not a tenderizer. Okay. Um, vinegar or vinaigrette, as it were, or vinegar-based mar marinade, it's not going to tenderize your meat. Even though a lot of people think it does, it actually is not. And if you want to get into like meat tenderizers, you know, you want to use stuff, you know, like milk, uh, yogurt. Um, some of the other um, dairy products that could, you know, it will break down the fibers of the muscles um, over time. Um, but this won't do it. You might think it will because of how soft the meat uh, feels as you marinate it, but it, it's actually not. So a lot of people get that, you know, confused a little bit. Well, yeah, your uh, vinegar-based marinades, 
and that's why it's a marinade, it's not a meat tender, it's a marinade, um, it's going to make your food flavorful. It's going to flavor it, okay? Not tenderize it, it's going to flavor it. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I have my roasting pan here. Um, if you don't have a roasting pan, you can just take a cookie sheet um, and put a cooling rack on it and sit your meat on top of it. The key is you want the juices to be able to fall through and not um, just sit on the meat or the meat just sit in the juice and also give a good air circulation. So what we're going to do now, we're going to take our meat out and I'm just going to sit it and let it sit for about half hour or so just to get room temperature and then we're going to broil it up, thus calling it London broil. Okay, so at this point, uh, we got about five minutes left. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take this out of the bag and put it directly onto the roasting pan. And we're going to preheat our broiler. So turn your broiler on um, 500 degrees, you know, and put your rack on not the top position, but the second to the top position. Okay, because what you're looking for is a six to eight inch clearance from the burner or from the the broiler. Okay, so let's get these get this out of here. You know, kind of shake the onions off. You don't need them; they've done their work. Put your London broil down, and remember. You want to look at the strands of the grain, how the grain is running, right? Because we're going to be cutting against the grain, okay? Now we're going to let this sit out for the last five minutes. And now let's get our broiler set up. Turn the broiler on and we'll be back with a sound of cooking. All right, so as you can see, see that? You see the clearance? It's not on the top rack, but the top rung is on the second one down. The burger element. So you want it that six to eight inch distance right there. And because we use um, oil in the marinade or in the vinaigrette, it's not going to burn. So you don't have to worry about burning it. But what you do want to make sure is that your London broil is close enough to the broiler to be effective. So keep that in mind. Okay, now it's time to add the London broil. Or in this case, our top round. Add it on there. All right, and what you want to do is you want to cook it for about, you know, you know play with your times, but you want to cook this about, you know, six minutes per side. But because of the way my girls and Mama Shaw likes their food, um, they don't like to see a lot of red, so what I end up having to do is cook it, you know, for seven and a half to eight minutes per side. So that's what I'm going to do right now. Eight minutes, and then I'm going to flip it over, and then do it for another eight minutes. All right, it's time to flip these bad boys. Make sure you have gloves on because it's hot. Let me show you this before I flip it. Is it even though it's right on the broiler? You see, it's not burnt. It's not burnt. Right? See that? It's not burnt. So I flip it over. Get our tongs here. Carefully flip it over. And give this another eight minutes. And then we'll be ready to rest. All right, time's up. Take this bad boy out. See again, not burnt. All right, now we're gonna let it rest. Cover it with a little bit of aluminum foil. Be careful not to burn yourself. And what this is gonna do is let the juices redistribute throughout the meat, right? Um, yeah, I've been told that, you know, if you put stuff on a broiler like that for 
the amount of time that you know I recommend or that you know the peanut gallery likes that you're bringing your meat up. Clearly, that's not the case. Um, specifically with this recipe, because remember, the marinade is a vinegar oil-based marinade, right? So that oil is going to protect the meat. So keep that in mind as well. All right, so it's rested for 10 minutes. Now let's cut it. I'm going to cut it in diagonal, right? And when you do this, um, the pieces that are closer to the end, they're going to be a little more well done. And as you get to the middle, you'll get more of the medium, you know, to uh, medium rare. See? go I'll just start plating this up as I cut I'm just cut this little end piece off here because it's getting in my way look look how juicy that is look at that so let's keep cutting it See, and you notice because we let it rest, the juice is not pouring all over the place. You see, and this is what you want. Smells delicious. You can smell the balsamic vinegar. Now, I know you're going to want to chop straight down, don't do that. Do it on the diagonal. Do it on the bias. And cut it thin. You know, don't do any big, big slices. Take your time and cut it thin. You know, this will go good on top of a salad. You know, this will go good with mashed potatoes. You know, it's almost limitless what you can do with it. But this is just a demonstration video, so we're eating it solo. Yeah, we're going to make some more vinaigrette to go with this that they can use as a dipping sauce. But you can use any dipping sauce you want. You know, make your own. You know, experiment. You know, that's what cooking's all about. Experimentation. Flavors. Yeah, but if you could put this on a salad, you will not regret it. I can tell you that from experience. And all the juices have went right back into the meat. Now let's start we're making that really good. Since we're doing just a small batch, you know, just for dipping. A little bit of garlic, a little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt, a little bit of balsamic vinegar, and then twice the amount of oil that you use of vinegar. Now let's get this mixed up. Okay, let's put this in a container and we're ready. Here we go. Our London boy has been sliced, we have the dipping sauce. And it is ready to go. If you like this video, like, comment, share. You know, spread the recipe around. And definitely try it for yourself. If you don't do anything else, try it for yourself. This is Sharon Sharon, and I'm out.